Alrighty, continuing on with the two-player pinball machine. Just below each set of flippers is a hole that right now leads to nowhere. I've got to get those to lead somewhere, and that somewhere will show the score of the game and ultimately the winner. The pinballs will roll on the inside of the machine towards the center and crisscross. So if a pinball gets past your flippers, it'll roll through and show up as a point for your opponent. And in the end, the person with the most points wins. I had about 6 inches of height to work with from the entry to the bottom of the machine. That seems like a lot, but considering how far the pinballs have to travel really eats up that elevation quickly. I started by marking out the slopes on the side of the machine. It's about 3 feet from the drop-in to the center of the machine. So I figured that a drop of about an inch and a half would suffice. Using a long level, I tested how it would roll at that slope, and it worked pretty well, so I moved on. That drop height will give me wiggle room in case I need to lessen the slope. In order to get them to cross over paths, they have to drop an entire pinball height plus the minimum thickness of a section of track, so drop another inch and a half down. That flat line is the bottom of the new opening where they'll pop back out. From that spot, I then drew out the scoring ramps that will live on the outside of the machine. They need to be long enough to hold 10 pinballs in case someone is really good and sweeps their not-so-competitive competitor. The exits for the pinballs need to be large enough so they don't get stuck. The pinballs are 1 and 1 16th inches in diameter, so I made the openings an inch and a quarter. It'll be flat on the bottom and arched at the top. I started with the 1 inch spade through the center at a slight upward angle. I continued with the jigsaw to carefully square up the bottom corners, making sure that I'm still keeping that slope at the bottom so the pinballs will want to roll through. Lastly, I used a Dremel to round the arches and make them look nice. The scoring ramps were really easy to put together. I already marked out how long to make them based on the length needed for 10 pinballs. I used half inch plywood for the track and end barriers. The barrier at the bottom of the ramp is a bit taller because it's the stopper. At the top of the ramp, it's really short because it can be. For the face, I used thin 1 8 inch plywood to keep the profile smaller. I'll go through and clean it up later, but for now, the score ramps were looking and working great. In order to construct the tracks on the inside, I have to flip the machine over just like when I built the tunnels. If the machine twisted a little bit, it wouldn't damage the tunnels. However, since these tracks will be going to the bottom of the machine, my fear is that if it twisted a bit, it would pop a joint. So to combat that, I added a 2x4 support across the center. This will give it just a bit more strength and stability when moving it around. When the glue had set, I flipped it all the way over and got it perfectly level upside down. The tricky thing of where the pinball has to go is that it's right where the underside of the flippers go. I started by marking the limits of the flipper mechanism and adding channel blocks to either side of the opening. These blocks will be a surface to attach the track. Normally for something like this, I would want to build up the track wall pretty high to assure that the pinball stays on the track. Though, if I go too high, it'll conflict with the flipper. So instead, I used quarter inch square sticks as the guides for this first section. Working with the machine upside down is a bit confusing because I have to work in reverse. Instead of building a ramp that goes down, I have to build it going up. I used a level to make sure I had enough slope for this first piece after the pinball drops. I repeated this same process for the entry to the other side. Next, I skipped to the end and installed the small ramps that leads to the exits. One ramp is longer than the other because of the crisscross. I supported them with connections to the 2x4. I added the last long section of track for the one with the longer exit ramp. This one will be a bit steeper than the other because it's direct with no drops.
this other one will cross over above and drop down to its exit ramp. At the crossover point, I used 8th inch plywood as the track. The long section of track here is not as steep as the other, but still has a pretty good slope from one section to the other. All the tracks have been built, so now all I had to do was add barriers to the tracks to direct the pinballs. I started with the chaotic exit point, then added long strips for the long sections. I added supports to the center of the long sections to keep them stable under the machine. I let it sit overnight to let the glue cure before flipping it back over. If I did it right, if I put the ball in this hole, it should come out on the far side. I continued with testing to make sure there weren't any adjustments needed. So at the end of a game, whoever has more points wins. It kind of acts like a soccer game, where the pinball going past your opponent is a goal for you. And that's it for this section. I continued to test and played a mock game against myself. In the next video, I'll be completing the construction, cleaning up the machine, and finalizing all the areas to get ready for paint. Okay, that's it for now. See ya.